Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 12 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play series. This game pack by Jaded, Cl Jaded Cat is available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Uh, to start off today, I want to make myself some better tools. I broke that Invar pickaxe with Silk Touch on it as I was building and clearing things out over here, and I decided that it's time to make something unbreakable. I could use Tinker's Construct and make myself something more high-end than that flint pickaxe I had to begin with, but to be honest, I just am not a giant fan of the Tinker's Construct tools. Everything in here is torn down because I'm in the middle of, uh, you know, redesigning this to work better with applied energistics, and I've got plenty of metals and materials at the moment. So I've got everything set up in here that I'm going to need to make myself some better tools, and those are going to come from Redstone Arsenal. Now, all of these redstone arsenal tools, for example, I'll use the flux infused sword, they use fluxed electrum ingots and infused obsidian rods. Those infused obsidian rods are made with flux crystals and ob regular obsidian rods. Obsidian rods are used made with blaze powder and pulverized obsidian, and the flux crystals are made with diamonds and destabilized redstone in a fluid transposer. I've got a magma crucible here, pumping into a fluid transposer. It's outputting out the top, also the bottom, into a cyclic assembler, but we'll get to that part in just a moment. So, first things first, to make um, all of the obsidian rods I'm going to need to make the Omni Wrench, Sword, Shovel, Pickaxe, and Axe, I'm going to need two, four, six, seven, eight total obsidian rods, which is going to take 16 diamonds. So, pull up my diamonds and grab myself 16 of them. Now those 16 diamonds are going to require 32 um, redstone. Start cooking that up. And you can see the destabilized redstone coming into here. Going to get the diamonds in there, and it'll start draining away. Oops. Hang on. There. To make the fluxed electrum, I'm going to need to create fluxed electrum blend and pyrothium dust. The pyrothium dust will be the first step along this line as I need pulverized coal and sulfur. Luckily, getting the sulfur can be done by pulverizing the coal. Oops. I'll show you that in just a moment. There you go. The only way to make the pulverized coal is one at a time. It would be nice if you could pulverize coal blocks, but it's just not possible. And that's you can also make it from coal grains from extra beans. The excess pulverized coal we'll have, we can use as a fuel at some point if we decide that that's, you know, a useful thing to do. So we grab a few stacks of coal, toss the first one in there, and I've already got one that's pulverized up into pulverized coal and sulfur for me. I'm going to use that sulfur and that pulverized coal to make myself some pyrothium dust, which is one pulverized coal, one redstone dust, and one blaze powder, one sulfur. That gets me 20 pyrothium dust. Put that in the induction smelter because that's where we're going to be using it. Now I'm also go I'm going to need to grind up some electrum ingots to make the um, flux infused electrum. It takes one electrum um, dust per flux infused um, electrum, and you have to make the um, electrum blend, which you grind the ingots into, and infuse it with 200 millibuckets of destabilized redstone to get one fluxed electrum blend. Now the Omni Wrench takes three, the sword two, the shovel one. So that's three, five, six. Two for the pickaxe is eight, and three more for the axe makes 11. However, to cook them, you have to do them in twos. So I need a total of 12 electrum. And I'll toss that in a pulverizer and get it started. Each of the rods requires, you're taking your sweet time. Each of the rods requires two pulverized obsidian and one blaze powder. Once again, I need a total of 8 rods, which means I need 16 pulverized obsidian. Pulverized obsidian comes 4 per block of obsidian that gets pulverized. Got almost everything processing away now. And this is done, uh, whoops, and I'm going to need to support those um, 12 electrum blend. I'm going to need another 24 redstone dust melt down get that going. Now I've got ender pearls in my inventory because I'm also going to need a battery to power these items because I don't want to have to keep running back and recharging them manually. I want to have something really nice on hand to 
um, keep them powered. To do so, I want to make myself a flux capacitor. And the top end flux capacitor is the resonant flux capacitor made with indirium ingots and pyrothium dust. Indirium ingots require indirium blend to create, and you can make indirium blend by using resonant ender bucket, pulverized tin, and pulverized shiny metal. Now, I've already got a cyclic assembler down here with a little bit of resonant ender in it, but I'm going to show you the, how the whole process works from start to finish. I'm just going to have to wait for this uh, electrum blend to finish being infused with destabilized redstone. While that's all that's working, I can come over here and I can use these pulverized obsidian to make myself eight obsidian rods, which I can combine with my flux crystals to make eight infused obsidian rods. Now that this is done uh, infusing or transposing, I can combine the fluxed electrum blend with pyrothium dust and the induction smelter. One dust and two fluxed electrum blend will create for me two fluxed electrum ingots. And those two ingots combined with a uh, one rod, now I've got a flux, a flux infused sword. It needs power to do anything though. On its own, without power, it does nothing. It takes 200 redstone flux per use which is what the energetic infuser is for. To craft the energetic infuser, you use mostly items that you've already seen. The leadstone energy cell frame, machine block, I mean machine frame, redstone reception coil, and some copper. It also uses redstone transmission coils. These are made the same way as the reception coil and conductance coil, but it uses silver instead of gold or electrum. So I'm gonna to toss that in there so it can start charging up. It goes pretty quick only holds 16,000 redstone flux and uses two per swing. So at that rate, I only get about um, 80 or 800 swings, something like that. Uh, it uses 200 per swing, so I would get 80 swings before this would be completely dry. That's just not a lot of fighting, and I want to be able to fight more than that. So we're going to set the magma crucible to output only through the top, so that I can show you how to make that bucket of resonant ender. It's going to take four ender pearls in the magma crucible, and I'm going to put the bucket of uh, an empty bucket into the fluid transposer. And as those ender pearls are uh, melted down, they transfer up here. Now I've got my thousand. Now I've got my resonant ender bucket. And now I can set this to output only through the bottom and turn this off, so that I can uh, start smelting up more of that more and more of those ender pearls and put them in the cyclic assembler. Now, indirium dust requires pulverized shiny metal and pulverized tin, which I'm going to grab a whole bunch of each. And it takes three times as much tin as shiny metal. So I'm going to stop at 21. There we go. And I'll just show you a couple of them to get started instead of, uh, well, actually I can, there we go. I've got both of them empty right now, so I can just start them going. Grab some shiny, wait for three tin. And I'm going to need a schematic to encode the cyclic assembler. The reason I want to use the cyclic assembler, it's possible to do this all manually, but it would require, you know, melting them down, grabbing a bucket of resonant ender, going to a crafting grid, putting in the bucket, putting in three pulverized tin, putting in the shiny metal. That'll get me four endurium blend and an empty bucket. Then I have to go back and refill the bucket redo it. The whole thing ends up taking quite a while. Oops, did not mean to put those in here. Let me get those out and let me get my bucket. All right, so I'm going to take my schematic. I'm going to hit zero to close off and I mean O on my keyboard to close out and NEI. I want to put my resident ender bucket there. I want to put my three pulverized tin in here and I want to put my pulverized shiny metal in here. And now I can encode this into the pulverized, uh, the schematic for enduring and blend. Now, I believe the first craft, yep, it won't even use up the bucket. It's going to go straight for the um, resonant ender fluid that's in the internal tank in the cyclic assembler. It's one of the reasons I absolutely love this block is I can craft items that require liquids without needing to have buckets of that. So there we go. Use that all up. And as I get more ender pearls crafted, 
the resin and ender will slowly drain into here. Once there's a bucket's worth, it'll make me another four Enderium blend. To turn that Enderium blend into Enderium ingots, I once again need two blend per one pyrothium dust. And there we are. I'm going to need just the two Enderium ingots to get started. Now, I'm going to take those Enderium ingots and I'm going to make myself the resonant flux capacitor. To make the resonant flux capacitor, ooh, these are the other things that Enderium ingots can be used for. They're also used to make the Mark 7 structural upgrade for Java, the Porta spawner, spawner from Mine Factory Reloaded, the resonant energy cell, which can hold 50 million RF and transfer 10,000 RF per tick. The resonant portable tank, which can hold 64 buckets. The resonant strong box, which can hold more than a double chest and be picked up and brought with you. Tesseracts, which are used to as a kind of a teleport pipe sort of thing. You can put them in line with energy conduits, with um, fluid ducts and with item ducts and transfer items directly from Tesseract to Tesseract without needing anything in between. Also used to make the Ruins of Self-Sacrifice. That's unique to this particular game pack. Um, Mind Tweaker has changed this to be a more expensive uh, recipe than it normally would have. And they're used to make the uh, Emerald Upgrade, Radius Increase 11 for Minecraft, Mine Factory Reloaded. However, I want to make the Resonant Flux Capacitor which requires a redstone flux capacitor, which requires a hardened flux capacitor, which requires a leadstone flux capacitor, all the way down the line. And for the leadstone, I need sulfur. Luckily, I've been cooking up more coal in the pulverizer. So I take my leadstone flux capacitor, which I can upgrade with invar, tin, and uh, redstone to make the hardened flux capacitor which I can upgrade into the red, uh, redstone flux capacitor using electrum and diamond, which can be finally upgraded into the enderium flux, I mean the resonant flux capacitor, but to do that I need more pyrothium dust. There we go. There we go, one resonant flux capacitor, which can hold up to 10 million redstone flux. That's a lot of swings of a sword at 200 redstone flux a tick, or per swing. So I'm going to toss that into the energetic infuser and let it start infusing. And while that's uh, charging up, I'm going to make the rest of the, uh, the rest of these tools, which I need my flux electrum for. There's the axe. Here's the pickaxe. Here's the shovel, and here is the Omni wrench, which also works as shears. All right, so I have replaced my crescent hammer. I have replaced my shears, which I don't even have in my bag. Hmm. I guess that's just how much I use them. Now, all of these need power. They'll get their power in just a moment when I have that redstone, uh, that resonant flux capacitor fully charged. As you can see, it drains a lot of energy. It's actually draining faster than this can even uh, um, recharge itself from the two redstone energy cells. Speaking of redstone energy cells, I've got these uh, ooh, ender generators are all empty. Time to go get more ender pearls. I need to set up a better way to fuel those in the future, but for the time being, I'm just going to fill them full so that they last a very long time. And I'm going to do that because I've got the um, enderium at this point to upgrade the energy cells that I'm using. Almost, almost. Nine million. Ah, good enough for the moment. I, my patience has ended. So without activating it, it just sits there and holds an awful lot of energy for me. Once I do activate it by holding shift and right click, takes on a nice enchanted glow, and whatever um, redstone arsenal item I'm currently holding in my hand will start to charge. See? Just like that. I can charge all of them up. They'll keep recharging as I go. 
And all of these have special powers based on pressing the V key to empower them, which makes a really cool little sound. All right. But what I'm going to do at the moment, I'm just going to pick up these redstone energy cells. And I'm going to start you charging again. It'll eat up the rest of what's in that uh, little guy right there. I'm going to use my Enderium ingots to surround the redstone energy cells and upgrade these to resident energy cells. And you can see that that 5,235,000 is over half of what this can hold, but there's just that little itty bitty bar towards the bottom of what it, uh, the resident energy cell can hold. And on this, it's an almost non-existent couple of pixels. So yes, these are fairly massive energy cells. I'm going to put those right back into place. There and there. I'm going to make sure that this guy is still set to... Oh, yep, I swapped them around. Thought I might. Oh no, I want you set to output on the left and you set to receive on the right, which you are. Now you're set to output on the left. There we go. So this one will fill up first. These are currently set to 2,000. I'm going to increase them all the way to 10,000. If you hold control, you'll do by five or one at a time, or by five per click. If you don't hold anything, it'll do um, 50 per click. And if you hold shift, it'll do 1,000 per click. I'm not sure why it's 1,000 over 100. Ah, you can right click. For example, if I were to hold control and right click, so you can really fine tune exactly how much uh, energy these things are w willing to input and output at a time. So that's going to very quickly transfer over all that's left in that into here. And I'm going to start my ender generators running on 16 pearls apiece because at 80 redstone flux per tick, even for six hours, I'm not sure. Well, that's 320 redstone flux per tick running for about six hours. That should get me a good amount of energy. I don't know if it'll even be able to fill up these two red resonant energy cells, though. However, we've got more power generation coming down the line once we need it. And in that time, the resonant flux capacitor filled up, and now I can charge up the rest of these. So now that I've got myself some really nice tools that'll uh, keep me going for a while, I want to get myself some new... Fr I want to start working on quest progression mentioned it last time, farming and quest progression this episode, but I'm more interested in the quest progression than the farming. I feel that the first step along that line is to finish off this learning to skyblock because I'm working on things well beyond the tech level of what it's asking me to. I've already made a precision sledgehammer. To make this precision sledgehammer, it's just a stick and some plastic. I'm going to make myself the tin upgrade now. Plenty of materials, way ahead of the curve, but I'm fairly certain I will catch up quickly. This just uses raw plastic, tin, gold nuggets, and redstone. And I don't have any gold nuggets, so let me grab some gold bars and turn those into nuggets. You make nuggets just by putting um, gold ingots in your crafting grid. There we go. Make myself one upgrade tin, and there we are. Have it. I can now claim my reward. Once again, I'll take the center, well, I'll take the right hand bag. The right hand bag was a greater bag, so let's see what goodies we got. And I'm actually going to grab myself a chest. Oops, there's one right there. This is going to be my deposit everything until I have a chance to sort out what I got out of the quest sort of deal. Open my greater reward bag, and I got 16 advanced draw bridges. These are kind of cool. They're a block from Tinker's Mechworks, and they're used to basically, well, I mean, Tinker's Construct, which is now known as Tinker's Me Mechworks. You set them down. Let me pick this guy back up, actually. I can set a, um, hmm, the advanced ones are quite interesting. I can set a specific item into here to mask it. And once I need a liver to show this off properly. All of my levers are in my golden bag of holding. It's a good place for them. That way I don't, you know, leave home without them. So it does nothing on its own. But if I were to fill it with, you know, a bunch of stone. Come over here. Toss that in. That's the... Oh, well that just turned an entire um, stack of stone into one. 
careful with that. Don't shift click into these without clicking the inventory button first. So I click the inventory button. I put a bunch of stone in here. I go back and give it a stone. It is now masked as stone. And when I apply redstone, it will extend that stone in front of it as a bridge. If I remove the redstone signal, it'll suck it right back up into itself. And you can do that with basically any material. Say you want to do, you know, a stone and then some glass with um, stone at the end. And you want your drawbridge to be um, six blocks long. Well, all you need to do is get yourself a little bit of glass. Open up the inventory again. And there you go. Now you've got a drawbridge that you can extend and collapse at will that'll have your choice of uh, materials and patterns inside of it. Normally, the, oops, trying to take my items out of there. It's a little finicky on the inventory management. Normally to make this item, you need to use blank cast, which is made with uh, um, that aluminum brass stuff we saw earlier some more aluminum brass, and a drawbridge itself, which is made with a whole bunch more um, aluminum brass, some um, bronze, or tinker's alloy, a vanilla dispenser, and a blank cast. So no matter what you're doing, you're using an awful lot of aluminum brass to make these. It's kind of a neat item. I'll probably find something to do with it later on. Maybe I'll uh, replace this bridge with some nice uh, um, drawbridges, but I've got the cables running underneath the bridge. I probably don't want to do that. All right, next quest on the list. Oops, I have to complete. We must go deeper before I can get to this, which I believe is going to ask me to craft or submit some redstone energy conduits, which I'm well past that. Whoops. So to complete, we must go deeper once. I need the auto brewer. There's two ways I can get that. I can do as it suggests and, you know, brave the nethers one time. Um, however, I really don't want to. It's just, it's not worth it. The chance of death is simply too high. However, I will be visiting there later once I have better protection. So instead, I'm going to make myself some angry dolls. Angry dolls can be used to spawn places as we saw earlier. To make them, I need to make precious dolls, which are made either with, whoops, I have to push the right button, diamond or emerald. Right now, I have 20 diamonds and 24 emeralds. So we'll make four angry dolls using emerald. And hopefully one of them will give me what I need. And then I need some porcelain clay. I've got plenty in here from leftover from past uh, projects. And just, you know, preparing in advance. That just used every single emerald in my inventory. Yep. You're going to want to be a little careful shift clicking if you're using the uh, ME crafting terminal because it has access to everything you own. So yes, I am now completely out of emeralds. Still got plenty of diamonds though. Still, that's a bit of a shame. So, angry dolls. The only real use I have for precious dolls is to make angry dolls. The only thing, other thing they can make is creepy dolls. Those are used to spawn endermen and I've got plenty of good endermen collection. So I'm just going to go ahead and cook up all of the angry dolls that I can get, which is 24 for now. And this is guaranteed to get me something. I'm going to put this stone back in there. And I want my barrel and my bucket. All right. So last time I just kind of tossed the stone barrel into the middle of this little room and fed it some lava, spawned the blaze, and I ended up getting hurt a bit. I want to avoid getting hurt if at all possible. So this time, I'm going to grab myself some quarter stone. I'm going to build myself a little blaze fighting area. Hello. Except I'm not going to fight. It's going to be more like an execution. I want... Oops. I want to make a nice 3x3 three three area around this stone barrel. And I want it blocked off so that the blaze can't get out and I can see in. Now, I'm still going to be in a little bit of danger, but there's no way the thing will be able to follow me if I have it closed off like this. So it's not perfectly 100% safe, but it's a heck of a lot safer than I would be um, as I was the first time. And 
and I've got my Builder's Wand over in that chest right there, which would probably speed this up. Well, what do I mean probably? It would definitely speed this up. So just a nice little safe area. Toss some lava in there. Wait for my angry doll to spawn a blaze. I'm just going to step aside, wait until I can hear the thing. Be right back. All right, there's my blaze. Now, it's going to take a couple of swacks with this sword to kill it. But I can infuse the sword. It's now doing 8 damage and 4 flux damage. That should kill it in 2 hits. So, oops, it can see me. There we go, 1. Oh, of course, it's just far enough away. I'll make myself a window on this side too. Now I can, now I can always get to it. So, first kill, no blaze rod. I'll be back once I do get a couple. There we are. Took far fewer than it could have. I'm going to go make myself that auto brewer now. Uh, to make the auto, auto, auto enchanter, auto jukebox, auto spawner, auto disenchanter, auto anvil, auto brewer. Mine factory likes its auto items. So I need three reception coils, two redstone repeaters, which I need. To, I actually don't have any redstone. Imagine that. Just don't use redstone torches very much in uh, modded Minecraft. There's other sources of redstone energy. All right, so two. Let's try that again. Two repeaters. Note to self, the smooth white stone likes to um, substitute for regular stone. Don't want to waste my uh, decorative stuff. Oh, do I have any plastic sheets? Let's find out. Well, I do now. Uh, machine frame. One of them. Conduct uh, reception coils. One, two, three of them. And now I should be able to make the auto... Hmm. Oh, right. I need to make a brewing stand. To make a brewing stand, I need blaze rod and cobblestone. There we go. One auto brewer complete. So let's see what goodies we get from this quest. Okay, I get two potions of healing, two potions of regeneration, half a heart, and left hand bag. Left hand bag contained a greater reward again, which gave me 16 pearl oysters from Mariculture. I don't exactly know what those are used for, but I believe they have something to do with making enchanted jewelry. If I right click one, nothing happens. Hmm, what do I do with pearl oysters? I can make beef and oyster pie with them. That is interesting and odd. That'll bear investi further investigation at a later date. For now, let's see. What, ooh, I think I have enough to gain another point. I like points. And just set another blaze to start spawning while I'm doing that. Got to use these up at some point. Uh, yeah, I can get another heart. There we go. Ten points. Yay. Next step. Never again. Now that you've decided not to go back in the nether again. Ha. I decided never to go into the nether in the first place. Oh, but I'll have to craft a creepy doll, which I really didn't want to do. But I have no choice in the matter. So on my way through, kill this place. Oh, set me on fire. Little twerp. That's okay. I'll eat some fish food. Well, fish and chips. Get the well-fed buff. It'll regen me slightly. Got another blaze rod out of it, though. Worth it. Alright. So, creepy doll is made again with the um, same old dolls, but I'm all out of dolls. And I'm out of emeralds. So I'm going to have to use the diamond recipe to make a precious doll. And then the creepy doll is made with ink sacks, lapis, Netherboard and redstone. One creepy doll created. There we go. I'm glad it counted the angry doll that I had made earlier. So I'm going to get a blaze rod, an ender pearl, and a quarter of a heart. Boy, I wish I'd known I could have gotten the blaze rod before I did the collect a blaze rod. Uh, well, I wish I could get a blaze rod reward before I needed to craft something with the blaze rod. That's what I'm trying to say. There, one more greater bag, and I get a 
full set of enchanted diamond armor, protection, and thorns on all of the pieces. Fantastic. I feel invincible. I really don't. In fact, that full set of protected diamond armor might let me last a few seconds in the nether. It's that kind of scary. Okay, moving power. I need to create Rednet Energy Cable, Leadstone Energy Conduit, Harden Energy Conduit, and Redstone Energy Conduit. You've seen all of these created on screen except for the Rednet Energy Cable, so I'm going to uh, build that one first. Rednet Energy Cable. Made, it's a mine factory reloaded item, and it's made with a whole bunch of red net cables, a block of redstone, and two electrum ingots. So, nope, I don't have any red net cables whatsoever. So I'm going to start by making some of those. And I'm out of plastic sheets in my uh, system. That's okay, though. Oops, I need myself another block of redstone. There we are. And the red net energy cable crafted like so. Unfortunately, this one did... Oh, I have to manual submit them. That's why. So if I click manual submit, I will lose one red net energy cable and it will go into the quest. Now I'm going to grab the um, leadstone energy conduit, hardened energy conduit, and redstone energy conduit and get those uh, ready to submit before um, I come back. Alright, I'm back after crafting six leadstone energy conduits and turning three of them into hardened energy conduits. I also grabbed one redstone energy conduit that I've had uh, sitting around in my golden bag of holding with the others. Well, there's others somewhere. There they are. I'm sorry. Okay. So now I'm going to manual submit the rest of that quest, and I'm going to claim my rewards which are a quarter of a heart and a greater reward bag again. This greater reward bag contains a wooden sword with Silk Touch X. Silk Touch doesn't have levels to it, so I have no idea why it's Silk Touch X besides just um, Troll Quest. And the final um, step in the Learn to Sky block is the Feel My Power. At this point, you'll need more and more power to automate machines and farms and blah 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 blah. What I need is a Resonant Flux Capacitor. And I'll get an endothermic pump, a redstone energy cell, and a couple of flight potions out of it. That's not super useful, unfortunately. The endothermic pump is probably the best uh, grab out of that, but I'll fill up this flux capacitor, and sure, why not? We'll finish off this quest chain. Boom. And I'll take the right-hand reward bag. This right-hand reward bag is another greater reward. I wonder if all of them are greater rewards. Um, with these extra leadstone and hardened energy conduits, I'm not going to be using them, but I can toss them in the pulverizer and recover some of the materials that went into making them. Which, I mean, that's a little handy. Kind of nice to get my redstone back at least. This endothermic pump will allow me to collect um, fluids from the world. The main fluid that I might want to collect with it would be lava from the nether if I were going to focus on lava power. I just don't need that much lava because I'm using enderpearl power and will likely be focusing on similar renewable um, at-home energy sources. Yeesh, these guys have a lot of power to go through. Alright, let's see what is in that reward bag. I'm going to deposit as much as I can, just to clear out room. And I received two spaghetti and meatballs. They are a large meal, which, very nice early on, not super useful now. But that is 100% complete of learning to skyblock, all quests complete. Starting next episode, I'm going to be working on the For the Hoarding quest, which the next step of which requires a deep storage unit. Or I can do automated mining with the Laser Drill Priest Charger and Laser Drill, which that rewards a full heart and some focuses, which are kind of neat. Um, however, for right now, we are out of time, so thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the series thus far. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to help me get some more uh, exposure in the world of YouTube, and I will see you next time.